Listen, you guys, you have got to watch who you hang with. Now, I know a lot of y'all are in school and and some of y'all don't even go to school. You're just hanging out on the streets with your buddies, chilling. You're chilling. You're chilling? Yeah, you're chilling. Mello is a cello and you're chilling because you're cool, because you got it like that. Anyway, do you know how many folks chilling with their buddies ended up doing time? Yeah, because of who they hung with, who they were hanging with, who they were chilling with, who they were getting high with, who they were drinking with, and who they were screwing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, I'm not trying to talk church right now. I'm talking your life. Because you're playing too many games and taking too many chances. Now, God sees, God knows, but you don't know what the heck you're doing. But you think you know everything because you get to a certain age, you start smelling yourself and can't nobody tell you nothing. So since I ain't your mama and I ain't your daddy, I'm going to tell you a little something, something about your little smelling self. Number one, you get knocked up over there by that cute boy down the street who's knocking up 10 of the kids in, in, in his class and telling everybody about it. And you're going to be stuck with an 18-year, 20-year jail sentence. Child, raising a child. Or brother man, you think you got it going on. So you're going to do what you want to do and can't nobody tell you what to do. You want to pack, you pack. You want to get high, you get high. You want to dig all the women you want to dig on? Hey, you do your thing. But let me tell you something, baby cakes. One day somebody may come knocking on your door to tell you, <clears throat> we need to talk to you privately because they want to tell you that your behind just got AIDS. And it may be an advanced stage of AIDS that you picked up. But she was so cute. And she was so fine. And you had to be the man. Yeah, you the man, all right. Yeah, how much man are you now? Think about that. Think about what you guys are doing with your lives. Chilling. You know, chilled ice melts. And then it's nothing. It's nothing left but a wet dish. No trace of it even being there the next day. All evaporated. You chilling. You okay chilling. Now, I know I look angry, but I get so bothered and worried about you people that think that you can take all kind of chances and play all kind of games and you don't have to pay any dues. You don't have to any uh, ante up any consequences because, you know, you got it going on like that, but you don't. You don't, baby. You're too old to hear what you need to hear. And you're too young and dumb to pay attention. Yeah, I called you dumb. You think I knew it all these years? I was young and dumb myself. And guess what happened when I was young and dumb? I wasn't saved either because I didn't want to hear nobody tell me about going to church. So I got my little happy hips out there in the streets in Los Angeles where I didn't even know my butt from a hole in the wall and got myself raped at the at gunpoint. Oh, what fun. But I was cool. Had to hitchhike my little sorry broke behind home. Think about that, you guys. You want to play? Oh, you going to pay. There are prices to be paid. I'm hitchhiking, and this dope dealer decides he, yeah, it's the dope dealer giving me a ride. 
I'm in the car with a dope dealer. What would have happened if the cops had pulled him over with my sorry behind in that car? What would have happened to me? Take one guess. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting up here trotting around with this fool, dealing dope. And he knocks on this one door and this couple answers the door. And when they open the door, I'm looking and I'm thinking, they look dead. They look like corpses. Oh, they're getting high. Oh, they're getting high. I wonder who tagged that name high. Because they look pretty low to me. They look like they were overdue for the graveyard. They both looked white, ashen, gray, bloodless. I am so serious. They both look like skeletons. They could barely keep enough consciousness to put one foot in front of the other. And I, I listen, I'm going to imitate so you can see just how much fun they were having. This is how their faces look, both of them. They're trying to find their way and going to struggle over here. They're going to find them a needle because they're so out of it. I mean, they were semi-conscious. They're going to light the spoon and they're going to burn the goodies and they're going to suck it up in the syringe. I mean, it was the most ridiculous it was sad. I felt so sorry for them. But it was the saddest thing. It was as if God took me on a 24-hour tour of the stupidity of the world. I never thought I'd ever see anything like that in my life. I never even knew that kind of ridiculousness existed. But these people were near death, and they were trying to get Hi. What are you trying to do? What are you sitting up there doing right now? Who are you sitting with? What are they trying to talk you into doing? Popping some pills? Drinking some alcohol? Smoking a little something something? Huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, come on. Quit screwing your life down the toilet. You're too young for that. Do you say you have enough sense? Do you say that nobody has to tell you anything because you got brains? Well, pull your brains out your backside and use them. Do something with your life. The one you don't want to hear about. The big cuss word, G-O-D. You know, that three-letter word that we don't want to express public. That's the only help you got. The lover of your soul, of your sorry soul. That's the, that's the one that loves you. That's the one that's in your corner. All you're thinking about is do's and don'ts. God is thinking about where he has plans. He says, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to bless you and not harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. King James says an expected end. You ain't got no future if you go down the road you're going. This is a wake-up call. So if it looks like grandma is fussing, yeah, grandma fussing. Because you need fussing. And if I can get my hands on your little hiney, I put my foot where the sun don't shine. But anyway, out of love though. So I want you to think about where your life is headed, you guys. Think about it. Because you, you can walk around. It's, it's a little stupid example. I used it at prison ministry one time. And I got a bunch of people together. And we arm in arm, you know, uh, uh, holding each other's shoulders. Talking about, yeah, baby, all us dogs going to hang together. Yeah, you're going to die together, too. If you don't stop. One way or another, death is going to take a grip on your future, on your destiny, on your mind, 
on your body. It's going to kill something. Don't kill your chances while you still got them. Please. Some of them people sitting up there on that street don't even hardly know their own last names. That's your future if you don't stop now. Stop laying down with dogs, y'all. Please stop trying to hang with people you know in your own common sense. Have no plans of going nowhere. Bad English, but you get my drift. They ain't going nowhere and don't care to. And guess what? They want you to go nowhere with them because they don't want to be alone. Losers don't want to be alone. Misery loves company. Now you going to keep them company or you going to shake yourself out of your stupor and get your act together and let God help you fill your destiny and see all that you're supposed to be in this life while you still have a chance.